Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Airspeed Prime here with my next Sword Art Online Allization Anime Review. This one's going to be for episode 21, which is called The 32nd Night. And this was an excellent episode. We are well and truly in the, uh, I suppose, finale of this midsection of the arc. Uh, everything is big from here on out, and this episode really, really delivered. First, of course, with the big fight between Kirito and Yujio. And I love how they did this. Uh, they put a lot of animation into this, really high quality animation, and they didn't just have it be just sword skills thrown at each other. Of course, there were skills, but they animated a lot of just kind of fluid sword play and stuff like that, which made it really, really good. When they locked swords, of course, we got the conversations and the attempts to sort of activate the piety module within Yu-Gi-Oh by making him remember what was kind of forgotten. And of course, we all know that it is Alice that would be the thing to activate that within him and I, I just thought it was really well done how they did it because like the story of this fight is kind of master versus apprentice and could the apprentice now with all these sort of new skills that have been activated with him within him defeat the master as we see Kirijo has kind of held back a few things he hasn't th thought Yujiro everything so it was really cool to get to see you know Kirito getting the slight advantage because he's got a few more tricks but then Yujiro also showing that he isn't just like the the exact copy of um uh, Kirito's skills he does still have you know stuff that he learned from his sensei at the sword academy um Golgoroso and we see him counter with uh, one of those moves and you know, there was just some nice dialogue. You know, there's a temporary kind of break in the fight. Kirito and uh, Alice have a little chat about this, and you, they kind of bring up the idea of like he shouldn't be like this. Like, he's been he's undergone the synthesis process, but no new knight should be this good. It's obviously explained to us later on that uh, Quinella says that she used a new type of piety module that would kind of unlock this meaning within him uh, earlier, and that's why he's able to do all this stuff basically immediately. But um, I liked that the fight was kind of even, like, uh, you know, Kirito was being pushed back at certain points, but he could always stay in the fight. It wasn't so one-sided or anything like that. It was nice and even and fit perfectly for those two having that fight. And in the end, they do break through to him. And I thought it was really well done because the, just the subtle animation on his face, you can see that he's gained that understanding. He looks across at Alice and finally, I suppose realizes the per the person he's here to save is right there and that's when he uses his enhanced, enhanced armament to trap the both of them in ice and leaves and it's interesting because he does leave he doesn't att attempt to kill them he just leaves and kind of lies upstairs kind of about it as well and that like he hasn't finished them off when he was kind of told to and obviously they're setting up the idea that this is him trying to assassinate Quinella and Again, like they played on what they did when she first, I suppose, tempted him to you know, remove the core protection. And this time, as this is about to happen, he tries to use uh, the Cardinal's knife on her to, I suppose, activate Cardinal's power and allow her to kind of get the advantage. But she blocks it with her kind of, um, what's the best way to describe her shield? It seems to just be like... Um, <clears throat> a general like system kind of shield of like she can literally use almost like code from the game almost to like block attacks that's kind of the way it looks there and he d puts everything into that dagger strike but it doesn't work and he, uh, he uh, he's blown back and that's when she reveals that uh, metal objects cannot ever kind of like pierce her skin or touch her skin so he switches to the blue rose sword and uh, after after a, an interesting kind of dialogue of, of like her trying to kind of tempt him again and play on, I suppose, his weakness of, you know, you want that eternal love, don't you? And here he kind of makes amends for falling to that temptation initially by understanding that, um, you know, love is, is continuous. It isn't just a reward for something um, like she's trying to make it out. And he kind of fires back that, you know, this is how you feel about love because you never got I suppose true love yourself and that's why you're so willing to kind of use it in such a cruel way um, and you know it, it kind of ultimately I suppose can be seen as true uh, depending on how you interpret I suppose Quinella's backstory but um, still uh, it's the sort of 
redemption of Yu-Gi-Oh after his kind of fall. Yes, there's only a couple of episodes in between one and the other, but I, I think it works for this kind of fast-paced conclusion that, you know, the the way the, the Integrity Knights are made, you have to take away the memory of the person they care about the most. And I suppose Quinella couldn't have accounted necessarily for the fact that they would manage to turn Alice so the person that Yu-Gi-Oh is here for is right there to kind of basically free him from the Integrity Night programming. So uh, that's what she's sort of shocked about when she sees Alice up there, that she is the one who kind of took the longest in a way to do the synthesis ritual on because she had to be forcefully converted. And suddenly she's here completely able to defy Administrator um, regardless of what's going on. And she she realizes like, oh, the seal of the right eye must be broken. She says the sort of code name for it and... Um, it's just interesting how much she actually knows about that. And she, she even mentions in the dialogue, um, like, the seal that that person put on her um, is is kind of interesting dialogue that's uh, kind of present there. But you see Alice kind of give her speech to the administrator about everything as everyone kind of comes back together. You see um, uh, Yujiro and no, uh, Kirito and Alice kind of come up from below uh, they chase Chodelkin up, which is uh, pretty funny. He's just completely like pathetic and helpless. Is like Kirito just casually, you know, steals his shoe and kind of climbs up after him. Uh, I thought that was a really funny moment, and it allowed then them to have that great moment of the three of them there on the same side for the first time, basically since the first episode. Uh, obviously very different circumstances you have kind of Kirito in a similar position than he's been in the whole arc but like Alice and Yuji are very changed and that Yuji has had just had this kind of fall from grace but the kind of redemption to come back Alice has obviously been changed by the piety module and doesn't remember everything but here she is trying to turn things around but they're all here to fight against Quinella and um that's, of course, where we get the sort of creepy ending of this with um, what finally, I suppose, motivates Chidelkin to um, fight 100%. And it's, of course, that he is utterly obsessed to a really creepy degree with Quinella. And she uses that to her advantage and uh, gets him to fight completely for her. And we're going to see that really expanded upon as we go forward. But um, I liked what was going on here and that he just seems so utterly lazy like he's powerful but super lazy he doesn't have the I suppose will of a warrior or a fighter and that like he just ran away from Kirito and Alice but here he is he just stands in his head and we see that okay he truly is like the master of these sacred arts here with um what what does he do he generates 12 thermal thermal elements uh one in each toe, one in each uh, finger, including the thumbs, and one in each eye, and combines them together into this like ultimate fire technique um, that he calls uh, this uh, Majin. And it's just this basically fire golem type thing. Um, it's crazy looking. Um, and obviously that's magic in this world at its highest degree, basically, the maximum possible. What are they going to be able to do against this? But we have th three very, very powerful fighters here. We haven't seen Alice fight all that much in the grand scheme of things. That's interesting. Kirito still has to reveal to us, I suppose, what his ultimate technique of his sword is. Which, again, interestingly, they mention the fact that, like, he, he says it as much that once we're through all of this, I will finally name you. He basically is talking to his sword a bit. So that's a cool thing, just acknowledging the fact that, you know, there's kind of, in a way, a reason, there's a kind of plot reason for why the sword hasn't been named yet. And that it's going to be a significant thing when it does finally uh, get its name. But um, yeah, there's just a lot of big, impactful kind of moments happening throughout this episode. Um, one thing I was wondering about is, I suppose, just in terms of Quinella's design. In the light novel, obviously, they have her just fight kind of <laughs> as she is, kind of completely nude, like the entire fight. And it's fine in a light novel because it's not mentioned in the description at every single point. I completely expected them to just have Quinella be in her kind of dress for like this fight, um, but it was it was it was so interesting that they just specifically just went for it. They're just like, oh yeah yeah, we, we, we don't care that it's an anime and it's completely visual. We're just yeah yeah that that's the way it is in the light novel. We're just gonna do it here. Yep, the dress comes off again and she's just naked for this entire fight. So. Uh, I I really did think they would take the approach of just you know allowed them to maybe do a bit more in the animation. 
I hope it doesn't like uh, limit them when using her in the fights and that they constantly will have to kind of keep her covered up in that way. I, I, I hope they find some way to do it so that that doesn't affect how the animation looks in the end, but we'll see exactly how to do it. I think so far we've seen that they've, they've, they've had her like that enough that like it seems like it's okay, but we'll, we'll, we'll have to, to wait and see on that. But uh, I think where, where they leave this episode off is in a very, very interesting place. They're obviously at the final boss, basically, but, you know... Is Yu-Gi-Oh one hundred percent? Is Kirito one hundred percent? You know, is Alice one hundred percent? Even like they're all not fully there, but they're together at last, and that's the significant thing. And obviously, first they have to get through Jadelkin, but then administrator and and where we're going now. So, um, it's it's interesting, definitely, um, the the approach in this episode, but uh, it definitely worked from the great action the you know best friends fighting basically to all the way to the end of the the reveal with Chidalkin and, and everything that's going on so you know it's it's definitely getting personal here we still have to get into the whole idea of like the the memories and stuff like that and deal with like how to reverse integrity nights and all that sort of stuff but you know that that's still to come but uh yeah th- this episode was very very good so in the comments, let me know what your thoughts were on this episode. But uh, yeah, that's been the video. Thanks for watching and bye.